Hey guys, so today we got a fun video. I'm gonna go over how to uh, wire up a pair of LED lights for your truck. And at the end of the video, hopefully you'll be able to make your own wiring harness, know how a switch works, uh, use heat shrink tubing, and even soldering if you want to. So Christian, you wanna show them what the end result will look like? Oh yeah. Oh, there they go. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. All right guys, so first off, I wanna say I'm not an expert. Um, there's probably better ways to do this, but I have used these concepts and uh, these methods to wire up all the lights that are on my truck. You've seen the lights on the roof. I made the wiring harness for all six of those, the lights on the side of the rack, the lights inside the camper shell. Uh, there's been no truck fires. There's been no melted wires. So can say that these concepts are safe and um, I think it helps understand just really simplify how an electrical circuit works or at least give you a working knowledge of how you can wire up these lights yourself. So um, very basics are you can think of electrical current as needing to flow in a loop. At one end of that loop you have, on one side of that loop you have your battery and the other side you have your light. If there's a break in that loop, that light's not gonna turn on. If that loop is continuous, then the light is gonna be on. So. That just means you need to run one wire from your positive terminal. It's usually red. Um, there's always a plus by it. And one wire from your negative terminal. It's usually black or green or brown, uh, which is the ground, uh, out to your light. That's, that's basically it. If you were to run one wire from here out to your light, one wire from here out to the other end of your light, your light's going to turn on. So if I was able to take this light right here, these have the red and black. Red is positive, black is negative. And just connect these two, this light's gonna turn on. So that's how simple it is to wire up stuff on your truck. Um, but there is a couple more uh, important things you should add in your wiring harness, like a switch and a fuse and a relay. So I'm gonna briefly go over that and then show you the option that I use in my truck to simplify it. So we've got the basic understanding. We need that electrical current to flow in a continuous loop. Second and probably most important part of your homemade wiring harness is gonna be safety. And that comes in the form of a little fuse. This can save your truck from catching on fire and it's a must have in all of your electrical harnesses. So how this thing works is it allows electricity to flow from one side to the other. So you can think of it just like a little piece of wire. Only the thing is this fuse can only handle so much electrical load before that wire in the center of it breaks. And that's how fuses work, basically. The higher amperage fuse, the bigger the metal in there, the more current it can hold. So you get a fuse that matches your application, and then if for whatever reason it's there's way too much electricity going through there, that's gonna break and keep your wires from overheating, causing fires. So that's kinda how a, a fuse works, and you're gonna wanna add it to your harness, um, and this is how you'll add it. You'll have your wire coming from your positive, running a short distance, maybe a foot, and then your fuse is gonna go in line. So basically cut your wire, put one side of it, one side of your fuse, the other side to the other. There's a fuse holder, but that's basically the concept. The important uh, part is when you, you don't want it too far down. So say you had this, wire, this fuse down all the way by your light, that means that there's still electrical current running from your battery all the way to your light, and then, then the fuse breaks. So it's safer to have this close to the battery so that if there is a problem with the wiring harness, you've only got electrical current flowing that short distance. So that's why you wanna put it in short. Don't cheap out and not use a fuse. Make sure you use a fuse in whatever electrical harness you make for your truck. All right guys, so relays. Relays are actually really cool and there's a lot of neat ways to use these. You can wire them to turn on and off other lights automatically based on what other things are turned on, but uh, for your lightning harness, basically what it is is a safety device. You can have just a little bit of electrical current running to your switch that might be in your cab, and you can have all the main heavy draw stuff running through your relay. So your switch is going to control your relay, and the relay is what is actually going to send the electricity out to your light. So you've got your wires running, you've got your electrical circuit running in a circle to your light, you've got your inline fuse for safety, you've got your switch in your cab to turn them on and off, and you've got your relay that's holding all the uh, heavy duty electricity. So if you wanna skip making all this yourself, and I highly recommend this because it's way cheaper, buy one of these little wiring harnesses on Amazon. Um, 
that's what I've done for most all my lights. It's, uh, this one happens to be by Mick Tuning. It was $13. It comes with a 40 amp relay. Uh, it comes with a switch already wired in and you can pick different switch types. There's rocker switches or little switches. Uh, I picked this one because I'm gonna hide it kind of incognito. Um, and you can pick wiring harnesses. This also has the, uh, the inline fuse that we talked about. So you can see right from the battery, fuse goes in there. Um, so that you've already got that wired in, you've got your relay, and then you've got your switch, and it comes with uh, set up to wire two lights. So I highly recommend this. If you were to buy all these pieces separately, like go to the store and buy five feet of, of a wire for the positive, five feet of wire for the negative, buy a relay, buy a switch, and buy an inline fuse and do all that. One, you're gonna spend a ton more time. Two, it's probably gonna be like three times as much as just buying one of these from Amazon. So I highly recommend it. Um, start from here. If you need to make these leads longer, that's super simple. You just add wire to it. Um, so yeah, buy one of these. And that also brings us to the next pot of, uh, spot of our video. And that's how to extend your wires or how to connect wires with heat shrink and with soldering. You can just twist these together and use electrical tape, but I highly recommend just getting some um, heat shrink tubing. You can get a whole pack like I did on Amazon. This was very cheap, I think like 12 bucks, and it makes your electrical work way cleaner, way safer, and it's easier to use than electrical tape. So you, there's a couple different methods. If you're not gonna solder, if you don't have time to solder, you don't have a soldering gun, you can open up the ends of the wire so they kind of are frayed apart and just push them together and then close them up so there's nice contact. And then you can slide this uh, heat shrink over that over those wires. Um, <laughs> this one, of course, in the video is not working out very well, but uh, okay, so now you've got your heat shrink covering that gap. The wires are nice and squished together, so there's good contact. Then you just use a lighter, or if you have a heat gun, all the better, but a lighter works. Um, and start in the middle, and move your way out and you can see as the heat is on it it is shrinking around that wire the other nice thing is the heat shrink tubing has adhesive inside it so as it heats up it shrinks to the wires and it also kind of glues itself to it so this is kind of a hack job i did on this one but you can see this is a lot better than using um, electrical tape it's a lot cleaner and it's a lot stronger once this dries and is cool this connection is pretty, actually pretty strong, even without, um, even without soldering. So that's an easy way to do it. That's what I recommend doing. And now on to the next part. So soldering. Uh, I've got my soldering iron here and it's a cheap one from Amazon and I think it just failed us and is not gonna get hot enough to really show you much, or at least the correct way. The correct way would be to have the soldering iron under the wire, heating up the wire to a temperature where the solder is gonna melt into the wire. My soldering iron is not really getting hot enough to do that, but you can kind of see how it works. It's gonna weld this wire together using the solder. So you don't really wanna do it in this fashion, but you at least will be able to get to see what it looks like when it is soldered. So if I had been able to do this correctly, you would have solder flowing all the way through here Oh, here we go a little bit. Okay, you can kind of see. <laughs> this is a terrible solder job, but you can kind of see. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, so our soldering iron kind of died on us in the middle of that, but the basic concept is you're using that solder to weld these two wires together, and in the end, it's actually pretty dang strong. So even though this is a terrible solder, uh, probably with lots of resistance, uh, it still worked and your wires are connected. Definitely get a soldering iron if you're going to do a lot of wiring on your truck. So we've covered how the electrical circuit works. We've got the fuse in there. We've got the switch. We've got the relay. You know how to use heat shrink tubing. You know how to solder or at least how to try to solder. Um, that's the basics of wiring lights for your truck. Like I said, if you want to skip a lot of this hassle, I would just buy one of these simple uh, wiring harnesses and I will show you how simple it is.
to wire some lights right now with one of these harnesses. So you've got your positive and you've got your negative. You just put your positive right onto the uh, positive terminal here. Um, you've got your leads, right? So you've got your red, which is your positive, your black, which is your negative. You match up to your light for the same color here. Black, ground, red, positive. Okay, that's in there. Now, my circuit's broken right now, so there's no electricity flowing. But as soon as this touches here, your circuit is on, and now your light's on. So that's really how fast you can wire something in your truck um, and how simple it is. The next part is uh, up to you, and that's considering how you're going to run this and where you're going to mount your light and all that kind of stuff. And maybe that's content for another video. But yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys feel confident enough to order some lights, mount them up on your truck, get a simple wiring harness or make your own, and you will be lit on your next trail adventure. So thanks for watching, guys.